he understood that when the end of the world, there's going to be tribulation. Uh, that there's going to be some storms. There's going to be some sickness. There's going to be some times in your life where, where things are not going to always work out the way you thought. But he says, in me, he gives you one of the one of the things you can't buy at Walmart and Kroger. He says, he gives you peace. And I, I don't know about y'all, but sometimes just having peace of mind is it, 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 good enough sometimes. Amen. You Amen. know, if you've, you've ever had stressors, if you've ever been through some things, and, and, and all you want to do is just get away yeah. and calm your mind down, calm all the world, get away from folk. Anybody been there before? Yes. Yeah. Amen. So here, here is what Jesus is saying. In the midst of your tribulation, he said, if you're in me, he says, he, you can have peace. So we discover, we discover that something that's in the world that, that can sometimes bring out suffering. What do I mean by this? Well, when we think about it, so often people suffer through no apparent fault of their own. We've discovered that. Why is this important? Because sometimes there are accidents. Sometimes there are birth defects. Sometimes there are severe injuries. There are some things that oftentimes come. We, we don't know uh, who, who oftentimes are dealing with abusive situations in their home. We don't know who's dealing with a rebellious child. All of these things are concepts that we experience that here it is, Brother Williams, there may not be a fault of mine. But because of this fallen world, I oftentimes have to go through it as a result. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes. And so as we start to look at it, one of the first things uh, as God alerts us is that we recognize that, that we're, we're living in a fallen world. But then there's a second concept we discover, and that's something wrong with God's creatures. Y'all remember that? When we looked at it again, uh, perhaps we looked at it. 2 Timothy 3. I'm just trying to get you, because lots of us in the other class. Let me help you out. But the Bible says, but understand this, that in the what? Last days. If, if, if you ever get a chance, read, read Revelation. When it talks about a child will turn against when it talks about earthquakes and, and rumors and wars and, and, and rumors of war, if, if you ever read that, it shows us that we're living in the last, last days. days. And in the last days, revelations have shared with us that the stuff we're seeing now is part of those difficult times mm -hmm. that were already prophesied to us. Amen. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean you got to run away and put your head in the sand and say, look, I might want to give up, throw the child in the head. There ain't nothing I can do about it. No, no, no. Because even when Jesus was, was, was dealing with his disciples, he, he said unto them, see, you're looking for signs and wonders. And he says, as you're looking for signs and wonders, they may not come right now. This, this, this doesn't automatically say that the times are going to get rough and, and, and I'm going to come back tomorrow. He said, stop looking for signs. And then what we've got to do is do our part. We've got to go out and minister. We've got to go out and say, we got to go out and disciple others, even in the midst of the difficult days. Now, here's where we see when we start to look at this thing. Because when we think about it, we can be targets of cruel acts. I want to share this with you from other people. And watch this, from Satan's rebel army. Uh, look, look, I'm, I'm catching you up. You, you, you may not get all of this, but I'm going to get you two seconds up. Both fallen human beings and fallen spirits have the capacity, watch this, to make decisions that damage themselves and others. Anytime we, we, we look and we try to figure out uh, this, this war, this 100-day war over in Ukraine, it boggles my mind. How, how in the world... Are, are, are they going through all of this carnage, uh, killing people, raping people, all in the name of, of I don't know, I, I guess they say communism. I don't know what, what, why they're fighting that. We asked the question about Uvalde. We asked the question about uh, Buffalo. We asked why 18-year-olds got semi-automatic guns and going into schools and going into supermarkets and killing people. We don't know why. Perhaps something is wrong with God's creatures. I'll see where I'm going with this. Yeah. So, so again, we, we, we realize, first of all, that, that there are some decisions that are being made 
And oftentimes it has nothing to do with whether you're in church or not. It's just part of the fact that there are still some evil that exists. Y'all with me here? I know you can turn your head and say, well, preacher, you know, uh, we, God got his fence around me. Yes, I believe that. But, 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 but there's still some things that we have to experience and go through. Are y'all with me? You know, just because you come to church don't mean you won't have a flat tie. Exactly. <laughs> just because you pay your, your tithes does not mean that, that that other hospital bill ain't going to show up that you can't pay for. We all experience certain things that, that every now and then we look at it. We say, you know what, God, how do we deal with all this evil around us? And, and then as we start to look at it, we also discover that here it is, each of us know firsthand that it means what it means to suffer as a result of someone else's sin. It might have been negative. And we all have been victims of the evil choices of others. Evil words and actions have left great marks on our hearts, our minds, and our bodies. And I, I, I believe I, I'm not by myself with every now and then. I, I still have some of those thoughts about how folk did me wrong. I know I'm in church, I'm saved, yes, uh, I, I preach from the pulpit, but every now and then I still think about how, how they did me wrong. I, I, y'all, 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 this is what Pastor thank God. This is what I do now. I thank God today. Amen. I thank you for our act of speech. Mm -hmm. I've seen the time. I was like that. Amen. But if you thank me for your act of speech, and then you're going to do the job that Amen. Mm -hmm. I'll say to God. But, but that don't mean that you still got that other man in you. Too. Still we still got that flesh. It's we not going to come out as much. Amen. I, I, I out every night. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it's it. not going to come out as Because remember, the Bible says that all of us has to be crucified daily. Amen. Because we're all still wrestling with our flesh and our spirit. And even though our spirit said, let it go. Sometimes our flesh be like, you know what? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. You don't know what they did to me. You don't, you don't, you don't know that. They, they, every time I see him, I think about how much money he owes me. <laughs> don't talk to me. Every, every, every time I see him, I think about all the stuff he did to me. And, and it just make me upset and mad. <laughs> we all, if we were being truthful, we all have had some evil things done to us. Evil things said to us, and, and the reality of it is it marks us. Amen? And so as we start to look at it, we realize, uh, as we discover that something now is wrong with the world, but we also realize that something is wrong, here it is, uh, when it comes to it. Now, again, as we move into another aspect of it, we also discover that some suffering comes as a result of Satan and demons. How many of us believe Satan is, is, is real? <laughs> I, I, I need to get that out of the way because I, I, I want to talk to people, you know, tonight who still believe uh, he's a made-up, fictitious uh, character that uh, that still have his pitchfork and red outfit on. I, I want to suggest tonight, Satan has been around uh, since the beginning. We realized, and we talked about how Satan stepped in and tricked Adam and Eve, and I tell you, he's still up to his tricks today. And, and, and the reality of it is that some of the suffering, some of the things that we go through have some satanic or some demonistic thing oh, yeah. attached to it. Yeah. Now, now, here it is, Flood. Uh -oh, uh -oh. I'm not talking about the movies. I know some of y'all say, well, I saw Halloween, and, and I saw Freddy, <laughs> and, and I saw, and I understand all of that. That's from the TV. That's but the reality of it is that we do. We, we, we do have an enemy of our soul that, that is, is constantly trying us, that constantly puts temptations in front of us. He is Beelzebub. He's the liar. He, he is everything that is not of God. And how we deal with that uh, is it, it, up to how, us and God. Amen? He, here is the key for us. When we start to look at it, I want to take you to Ephesians chapter 6. Can I take you there? Uh, I, I want to get to that because I, I still believe that, uh, that 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 even though Satan is real and we've got to deal with some of the aspects of it, I do believe God has given us a way of escape. Uh, God, God has given us a way how we deal uh, with this enemy of our soul. 
Uh, again, uh, you ain't got to cuss him out. You ain't got to get you get, 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 get yourself. You ain't got to do all of that. But but look look what Paul says uh, to the people of Ephesus because again uh, they they're dealing with so many things that that come against them. And 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 there as we as we start to look at, I want to take you to verse number ten uh, because again. Uh, Paul is talking to these individuals, and, and they're wondering why people are acting the way they are. They're, they're wondering why it seems like the church is being torn apart. Well, look how Paul answers them. He says, watch this. Finally, my breath, be strong out in the Lord. Put on, and watch this, and, and the power of his might, put on the whole arm of God, that you may be able to stand against the wild of who? Oh, man, y'all missed it. Let me help you out. The wiles of the devil. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, now again, Paul identifies the devil because he said, look, you, you got to understand there are some things that are come against you. And if you're not strong in the law, if you're not uh, strong in the power of his might, he's going to overtake you. And, and here is what he begins to say to us uh, in, in verse 12. For we wrestle not against one another which are flesh and blood. But we wrestle against who? Principalities. Against power. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Against spiritual wickedness. Here it is, Joey. In high places. Now, as we start to look at this, I, 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 I just want to uh, suggest to you that, yes, we recognize the devil is real. And he does have a realm that he operates in. You believe that? Because if we don't believe that, we we, we in trouble. Because... Some of us, if truth be told, uh, the devil has had his way with us in our lives before. Mm -hmm. And the trick for us is to recognize his tricks. And how do we recognize his tricks? Well, first of all, we got to recognize how he operates. He, 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 he's not a guy against flesh and blood. He doesn't knock at the door and say, hey, y'all, I'm the devil. <laughs> Amen? That doesn't put a hat on and say, you know what? I'm the devil, you know? No, he's subtle. He, he works through people in our lives. Sometimes he works through supervisors. Sometimes he works through family members. Sometimes he works through your children. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So, so how do we deal with this and, and not allow him to cause the suffering in our lives that's going to lead us down the wrong path? Well, watch what Paul said. If we are to engage in the warfare and to keep him from, from, from helping us to lose our mind, look what Paul said. There are two essential things you got to do. First thing Paul says to us in order for us to deal with Satan and the demons in this world, he says, You got to be what? Strong. In who? Lord. Let's, let's back it up. How do you become strong in the Lord? Being in his word. Okay, okay. I'm, we, in, I, I'm in his word. And why, why do I need the word of God? Because that's when we get our strength from. We get strength the and what else? That he have, that's what else do we get from the word of God? Besides strength, strength peace, direction, and direction. That's the other side of why we come. Because again, uh, the Bible says we perish because of lack of knowledge. And if we don't know the devil's playbook, <laughs> here it is, you're going to always walk in the field. How do we learn the devil's playbook? We open our Bible, and God begins to minister to us about how the enemy comes against us. And so notice what Paul said. Part of the playbook is to recognize, first of all, how to be strong in the law. But then secondly, he said, you got to put on the whole armor of God. Don't, don't just put on your Bible study. But, but you got to have the shield of faith. You, you got to have uh, the, 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 the able to quench the fiery dust that come in. You got to have, as, as verse 17 said, the helmet of salvation, the sword of of the spirit. You got to have all of this in order for you to withstand the enemy that's trying to come against you. I'm going to tell you it's important for us that when we start to understand that whole arm of God, you never want to go to battle without having everything you need. I got some soldiers in here. They'll tell you uh, that, that anytime they're facing the enemy, you don't want to leave the, 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 the main equipment behind. You, you want to make sure that, that you have your helmet, you got to have the, the, the right, you know, uh, 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 guns that you're dealing with. You got to have it all because you just never know what you're going to come in contact with. Am I, am I right, Pastor? 
And, and this is what Paul is saying. Look, you don't know what you got to face when it comes to that gift. You don't know how he's going to try you on every hand. But, but here it is, King. He said, you got to be strong in the Lord. You got to you gotta be so no proud in order for you not to have to go through the pains and suffering that is caused by the enemy who is trying to steal your joy, who is trying to come against you at every level of your life. And so as we start to look at this, here it is for us. Uh, if, if you take a weak man, I want to say I saw this this morning, who, who can barely stand and put the best armor on him, he will still be an effective soldier because he don't know how to stand. And, 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 and that is why it is so important that we put on the whole armor, that we are standing in the Lord. Because in the weakest part of your life, the Bible says when you are weak, then we become strong. How do we become strong? We become strong in the Lord. And, and there comes a time where, yes, you're going to be weak and God's going to have to stand for you. He's going to have to prop you up. He's going to have to be there with you. He's going to have to wipe tears from your eye. Whatever he needs to do to cause you to get from the suffering and the pain you're having to deal with and to bring victory in your life, sometimes you need God and say, Lord, help me to stay. Anybody been there yet? You know. And so, again, as we start to look at it, we realize that we've got to be prepared for comeback. But here's the key for us. Every Christian has to be equipped for Christian comeback. Because you just never know who you're going to face uh, when you go to work. You don't know who you're going to face when, when, you, when you go uh, to, to some of these grocery stores. I was in Walmart today. Hey, that right with me. We with that. <laughs> and, and we don't know. You know, again, we had some people that went uh, just two weeks ago into a grocery store. And, and here it is. They didn't know that it wouldn't be uh, some, some, uh, a Christian combat. It wouldn't be an a, a, a 18-year-old dressed in real combat gear, mm. armor-piercing stuff that he would go in and take lives simply because he recognized that pigmentation was different. Mm. We don't know what we face when we go out. We don't know what kind of enemies that we're going to be faced with. But Paul says, regardless, keep putting on your armor. Amen? Amen. I'm not talking about the armor you buy on Amazon and Walmart. I'm <laughs> talking about that helmet, that salvation, the gospel of peace. That is what we need in order for us to withstand some of the things and some of the attacks the enemy will try on us. Anybody with me? Yes. So, again, as we start to look at it, we realize that here it is. Job becomes an example of, of how Satan comes. Can I take you to Job chapter 1? I need to show this to you because sometimes you, you may say, God, I don't know why I'm going through this. And, and it may not be because you come to church that you're going through. Uh, look, look at Job chapter 1. I'm going to share this with you. Uh, because, again, we, we find uh, there was a man by the name of Job. And, and in this, uh, as we start to look at it, we realize uh, that, that this man, Job, had an opportunity. Uh, according to verses 1 down to 4, he was a blessed man that feared God, a shoe evil, had seven uh, sons, three daughters. He had it going on. But the Bible says in, in verse 6, now watch this, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Verse 7 says, and the Lord said to Satan, whence comest thou? And then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro from the earth, from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, hast thou considered my servant Job? That's not like him. <laughs> Here it is. He, in the earth, he's a perfect, he's an upright man, one that feared God and eschewed evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for nothing? Hast thou made an hedge about him and about his house and about all that he had on earth? Thou hast blessed the works of his hands, the substance is increased in the land. But look at verse 11. This is the part where it gets interesting. Uh, but but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had, and he will curse you to your face. Wait a minute now. Look look what happened in verse twelve. And this is this is where as we start to look at it, it confuses us. If 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 this man Job Wendy was a perfect man, upright, eschewed evil, had prayed and, and paid money for his kids, all of this seems to be great. 
in verse 12 becomes confusing to us. Because in verse 12 it says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he had is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. And, and, and here it is for us. As we begin to look at the rest of it, the Bible says, Then all hell broke loose in Job's life. Now, again, as we start to look at it, we realize that Job becomes an example of a person who suffered incredible tragedy. You know the story. It's, it, uh, the Bible says, you know, a servant, a messenger came, and, and, and the first one said, All your oxen and asses uh, that were out there, uh, someone has come and stole it. The Savior has came now and, and, and slew all that you had. Then another would come and say, look, the fire came and now burned up your sheep and your servant. Uh, verse 17 said, while he was speaking, the sardines came, uh, came and got his camels and all that was there. While he was still speaking, the Bible says, sons and daughters were eating and drinking in the eldest brother's house. And a great wind came and killed all the children. And, and all of this happened as a result of Satan touching his affair. Mm -hmm. Now, again, as we start to look at it, we realize that, that here he is now under incredible tragedy. He's there because he's under what we call a satanic attack. And, and we ask the question, as we look at Job's example, and we say to him, why does God allow Satan, you're going to see this in a minute, to take away Job's possession, family, and... I'm throwing it out there, y'all, because the many times I read this, I say, God, did we have to go through all of this? Why do you believe God said to him, all that he had, I'm going to give it to you, Satan? What's your thoughts? Man? What's your thoughts? Because it, it doesn't seem fair to me, but, but what do you think? Hmm. Bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see him trying to be I don't know what he did all of that. What do you think, Stanley King? Why, why do you believe? And those who are joining with us, why is it that, that, that it seemed like, uh, here it is, God had a hedge on him, but why is it that Satan is allowed to operate and cause all of this tragedy in, in Job's life? What do you think, King? What do you think? Uh huh. But at a time like this, Mama. <laughs> understand now, faith. Okay. You know that, that where he in a situation. Hmm. And he would turn on the. Okay. But he was proving this point to 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 to, to uh, the devil. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. That he had a, a, a great. Hmm. And then I looked at the story two thousand. All right, all right. And, and we wonder why why did he let Jesus and, down the cross? And he went through all of this himself. All right. Just for our sins. Huh. Okay, all right, all right. So, so Job was an example of Jesus Christ. When did you hear that? <laughs> it, 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 that? That Job was an early example of what was going to happen in Jesus Christ. But we begin to ask the question, why, why, does, why does God allow Satan to actually exist? You know, we, we know that, that he's a fallen angel, according to the psalmist. Uh, at one point, he was part of God's uh, kingdom. He was the leader in the choir, and, and he thought he needed to have the same power as God. Therefore, a battle soon in heaven, and he and all of those that followed him were kicked out of heaven, and they made their realm in hell. So why is it that God just didn't destroy the enemies at that point? Why is he allowed to cause this kind of tragedy at all? But he's not that type of God. Wow, um, okay. All right. to, what would we learn from it if he just demolished them? Wow, okay. okay. That's a good question. I mean, how can we keep faith in him if we don't have anything to battle to keep asking him for help? Wow, okay. So are we are we are we saying that that, that Satan actually has a purpose? Everything has a purpose. Everything. Let, let's, let's look at it for what it is. But we still have a right to choose. Right. Right. Okay. But why does God allow Satan to, to introduce evil to us if, if he's such a good God? Well, how do we come to our trial and get the 
Exactly. He, here is our conversation as we're looking at. You, you got you got Satan on one side. And he and he is an adversary of, of, of those who are of God. But the other side of that is that Satan actually has a purpose. Because remember, let's go back to Job. The Bible says there was a meeting at the table. And Job was, look here, was discussed, but Satan was part of the meeting. Yeah. Wait a minute now. How is it that there's a meeting in heaven and, and Satan is sitting at the table? Can I just testify and share with you? Satan can only do what God allows yes, him to do. And, and, and even though we may not understand all that Satan does, but Satan does have a purpose. And a lot of times, remember, he asked the question, God, if you take the head to wall him, then he will curse you. In other words, in some ways, God does allow certain things to come in our life to test us to help us to go further in our relationship with God. And perhaps when we look at Satan, Satan is nothing more than an instrument mm -hmm. that is used to help us to grow. Mm -hmm. Let me help you out. Anybody ever been to the gym before? And if you ever go to the gym, that there's something about putting more weight on that even though it's heavy, now here it is, the more you lift that weight, the stronger you become. Can I share with you, the more you interact with the enemy and you come out, the stronger in your faith you become. Uh-oh. Somebody said, well, preacher, I ain't got to, if I got to go through all of that, go ahead, kid. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. That's just I got it. I got it. Because God could have just destroyed the devil. Mm-hmm. From the beginning. From Kicked him out, destroyed him, evaporated, no more devil. But as we start to look at it, at, at, at God had a plan not only for, for man, but he had a plan even for man to start to get back into the right relationship yes, with him. That, that, it, it, it was, I, I know we say, well, you know, Satan came to the God and he did this and that. But do you believe that nothing happens without God's allowing it to happen? So maybe in those instances where Adam and Eve were enjoying paradise, God needed to test them to make sure that they could handle what was going on, that they would stay in that right relationship. And every now and then, God will allow Satan to come in and allow him to test you. Amen? Sometimes he's going to introduce certain things to you. Sometimes it may be that forbidden fruit. And, and God, like Jonah said, he, he want to make sure that you are making good decisions, that you are making the right choices. And that's when we start to look at that sometimes the suffering comes when we allow Satan to have dominion, when we allow him to introduce and we fall in the traps. That's where we're going with this. So again, as we start to look at it, we ask the question, why did Job have to suffer? I'm backing you out now. God allowed Satan to devastate Job's life, but as Job came to realize that his life became a testimony, watch this, of the trustworthiness of God. Because when we start to look at Job, Job, amen, even though he was tested, there were still limits put on the enemy. God told him, you can have this, but you will not touch his life. Mm -hmm. Yes, his wife may cuss, just because God had died, he may lose his children, but here it is, everything the devil does have limits to it. Because God is still ultimately in charge of everything. You say, well, okay, God, wait a minute now. When, when we looked at you all day, where were you then? God said, that was limits I put on that situation. You know, when they were in Buffalo, what happened? God, God said, that was still limits. We don't understand it because here it is. We're not at the table with God. We, we don't know that there's some things happening in the world, uh, not, not to tear us down, but to get us to understand that here it is, and you, you may disagree with me, that everybody don't need a semi-automatic weapon. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes God will, will have to use certain instruments to get us to the table and start talking about getting these guns out of these little boys' hands. Y'all gonna talk to me in a minute. Sometimes God will use instruments to get us to start thinking about mental health and start thinking about certain things. Now again, please don't crucify me and say, that 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 uh, that all of this. And no, I'm just saying to you, 
when we start to look at the big picture, that, that sometimes Satan does come, and here it is, in the midst of it, Job's life became a testimony of how we can go through some struggles, and here is the good part about it. We can come out of our struggles. Look what Job said, though he slay me, yet will I still trust in the Lord. So here it is for us. When we start to look at it, we realize that trusting God while life falls apart. Is oftentimes some of the things that get us through whenever the enemy is coming against us. Here it is. He illustrated that a person can do what? Trust. That's the key. Trust God and do what? And maintain integrity. Here it is. After all of that, Job never cussed God. I don't see it in a minute. After all the stuff he went through, he still showed you he will still be trustworthy even when his life was falling apart. Here it is for us, because God is worth trusting. And then when we start to look at all the things that we go through in our lives, we also have to realize that, that because God is who he is, uh, God will never put more on us than we can bear. Amen? I, I, I never forget being, being you know, one of those in, in college. And I, I thought I could get in one of those weightlifting contests that, you know, and, and, and here it is, so I got down there, I, well, I, was, I, was, I was on it back in them days, and then all of a sudden, they, they put something I've never been under before, but I said, you know, I'm going to try, I'm going to try, I can get this, and, and, and I got it halfway, and I said, please, somebody help me, I, this, this ain't where I need to be, this, this, this double what I weigh, and, and, and I recognized at that point that everybody has limits. And even you and I, God knows how much we can handle. So as we begin to look at it, we realize that, that here it is, Job 2, 10 said, Shall we indeed accept good from God? And shall we not accept adversity as well? At least in this story, Job didn't listen to his wife. He did. <laughs> he did. He did. And so as, as we start to look at it, we recognize. Y'all men saw that. Charles, the only one heard that. Charles, I ain't going to say that. I'm not going to let Sonia have that one. I'm going to let Sonia have that one. So with the reality of what we're dealing with is we're dealing with the fact that some of the suffering that we go through uh, may not have anything to do with us, but it may have everything to do with the fact that not only do we live in a fallen world, but we have a satanic attack that can sometimes get to us. Here it is for us. In the end, Job learned that even though he didn't understand what God was up to, here it is, he had plenty of reason to believe that God was not being unjust. God was not being cruel. And here is the key. And God was not being unfair. That is where, this, this, this is where you know that you have grown in Christ. Because you didn't charge God blamelessly. You didn't cuss God to his face. You, you recognize that through all I've been through, I may not understand it now. But I understand it better by and by. I used to hear the, I used to hear the old church. He said, you know, we'll understand it better by and by. I didn't understand that. I, 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 I can't wait to buy and by. I need to know what's going on. <laughs> but, but the older I got, the more I recognize that, that, that we cannot always comprehend the mind of God. And, 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 and to put ourselves in a point where we think we know what God is thinking. That's why I always, I always be careful when, I, when I'm preaching and teaching y'all. It was God said, no, 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 no. Let me be careful about that. Because, again, I'm not God. All I can do is hear from him and he gives me what I need. I, I can't, amen, always tell you this is what God told No, 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 wait a minute now. Be careful. <laughs> because uh, as man, none of us have seen God in me. But, but all we can do is we can get and grasp what God has and we can convey it with others. So, here it is for us. When we think about it, mm -hmm. suffering is a result of something's wrong with me. This last part, I promise y'all, getting y'all out of here. Now, remember Job. Let's come back to Job. Job chapter 4 and 7. He says, remember, I pray thee, whoever perish, be innocent, or where were the righteous cut off? Charles, I looked at this again. And look, look again. Job, Job said, remember, I pray thee, whoever perish, be innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? No, remember, Job's book is a testament of, of trusting God, even when everything is falling apart. And throughout 
the whole book, Job is having to deal with friends who are saying to him, Job, you did something wrong. Job, let me have some secret sins you ain't talking about. Job, you must have been creeping on your wife. Job, what were you doing? To call all of this hell that you're going through, Job. And Job is saying, wait a minute, I'm innocent. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know why I'm perishing. I, I, I didn't do that wrong. I, I kept going to the temple. I kept praying. I kept uh, trying to instruct my children. I don't know why it seemed the righteous seemed to be cut off. And here it is for us. Every now and then we have some of the same mentality. God, I ain't did nothing wrong. Why I got to go through? Anybody been there? I'm trying to live right. I'm trying to do right. I paid a little money on the table, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get there. So God, why I got to keep catching? And so the more we begin to look at it, we realize that, that, that sometimes uh, in, in our life, that, that, that something goes wrong in our life, and we immediately jump to the conclusion that God is whipping us because of some sin we've committed. Anybody been there? Yes. Yeah. That, 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 that maybe I may go back and look at it and say, you know what, maybe I didn't do this, or maybe I didn't do that. And, 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 and every now and then, it may not be God is whooping you. <laughs> It may be the fact, as we've looked at it, that, that we live in a fallen world, John. It may be the fact that, that we just have some evil creatures. It may be the fact that Satan is just going to try us. So whenever we begin to look at it and we, make, and we personalize it, we also got to realize this, that here it is, that's not necessarily a shirt. We, we can only grasp what God gives us in order for us to truly know why we go through what we go through. And, and, and this is why it, it's important. I'm going to share this. With you. Job 4 8 said, Even as I have seen that they plow iniquity and so wickedness reap the same. Look, look what Job said. Even though all the stuff I've been through, uh, look what he said. I've seen that, that there are some iniquity, there are some suffering, there are some pain I got to go through. And here it is. Sometimes it is caused by wickedness. Sometimes. Here it is. The wicked get the same thing I get. And, 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 and here it is. We recognize that the rain falls on the just and the unjust. And, and, and every now and then, we, we've got to not personalize some of the stuff we go through. Because can I tell you, I deal with people all the time that come in and say, well, you know, I, I'm the only one dealing with this. And I, I said, no, no. Baby, let me just be real with you. Everybody goes through some sickness. Everybody loses some loved ones. Everybody has some trouble in their relationship. Uh, we, we all, because again, we, we live in such a world that, that it's, it's not a certain that you can put your finger on and say, well, uh, because I ain't go to church, I'm dealing with this. Because I didn't I, I didn't read my Bible, I'm dealing with this. You, you see what I'm going to talk? And, and sometimes what Job was trying to show us is we got to stop personalizing and believing that it's because of the sins that you did that are being visited on you and your children. And oftentimes that's not the case. So when we start to look at it, here it is for us, we, we all come short. Everybody believe that? And, and, and one of the things that we have to realize is that there are some, some moments that even though we deal with some things, some things are a causation of some of the stuff we did wrong. Look what Job. Job said, watch this, unlike him, none of us are innocent. Okay, I know I got some folk in the room. I know y'all are holy folks. <laughs> feel that you ain't never did nothing wrong, but that ain't my testimony. But when we start to look at it, we too have played the role of sinner. Harming others with the choices we make. And here it is, like Genesis tells tell us, sin sometimes lurks at the door. And sometimes, sometimes we, we got to have that David mentality where even when David was going through, he had to admit to Nathan, I am the man. I did wrong. You, I was the one that looked at South Bathsheba. I, I was the one that had Uriah killed her husband. I'm the one that messed up. Yeah. And, 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 and even David, who was a man after God's own heart, he still had to recognize that sin has consequences. So while there are moments that, that, that yes, we can blame the world, that we can blame Satan, that, that we can bring the fact that we, we, we have some evil creatures. Every now and then, we got to get back to the door and, and figure out if this is me. Did I do the wrong? Is there some stuff I've done wrong? Y'all with me? So, 
So look what happens here. We, we all come short, but give it to us. We like Cain must battle our fears, our insecurities, our shame, our resentment, our anger, and, and here it is. Failing to recognize or master these things often create suffering for others. Yes, uh, we, we, we got to understand uh, when, when we mess up, uh, don't 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 keep uh, allowing the stuff you did to impact the lives of others. Sometimes you just gotta go and admit, yeah, I I, I did it, you know. Uh, no, you 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 got reason to be mad at me, you know. <clears throat> I come short and did this, and again, as we start to look at, there are some things that you have to admit it's on me. Let's be real with you, you know, some stuff from our past, uh, some stuff we should have did different. Should have, should have spent a little bit more time at the house. Should have, should have been out drinking that alcohol. Should have been out doing this with that. Some stuff you got to say is on me. Anybody been there yet? I, 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 I can just admit, you know. I, I, I'm growing up now. Cause back in the day, boy, I lied to me. No, <laughs> hey, oh, sorry. Oh. You, know, you ain't going to never get me to admit it. <laughs> but, but because I've grown up and I realized that that the Bible says truth shall set you free. Yes. And, 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 and when you learn how to walk in truth, then, then again, you can stay away from all the things like Cain did. You remember when he slew his brother? And, 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 and he did everything to tell God, no, it wasn't me. I don't know where he is. <laughs> God, you, you, you know, maybe you, you, maybe you ain't looking for him in the right places. Am I my brother keeper? Oh, you know, you got me confused. But at the end of the day, you know, we got to own some of the stuff that we've done. And, and again, as we start to look at it, in order for us to, to not cause suffering for others, we, we got to admit it. And so here it is for us. Uh, when we suffer, we need to deal with the hard truth that some suffering is the result of my actions or my inactions. Anybody know what I'm talking about? That, that, that yes, uh, the reason why so many things are going on uh, in, in my family or in the lives of my children is because there are some things that they saw. There are some things that I did that, that I'm not proud of. But at the end of the day, I'm doing all I can to make sure that the suffering stops here. Amen? Amen. Uh, oftentimes, I, ha I, I, I deal with families so much, guys, and, 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 and there's so much that comes from, from being dysfunctional so many times and and the reality of it is that, that by the time uh, the kids get old, that dysfunction is in them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now we, we, we have found Jesus, and now we want the dysfunction to leave. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but the reality of it is that some of the things that we're seeing, some of those generational curses that are going on in our family, it, it, it just didn't start. Amen. Right. It started a long time ago. Right. And, and we've got to make sure that, that somewhere along the line that, that, that we stop some of the suffering, some of the addictions, some of the stuff that we're seeing now. Amen? Amen. Because if we don't, it, it will continue to be a part of the lives of our children, our grandchildren. And so as we start to look at, I want to share with you, we got to look in the mirror sometimes. Some may be results of direct consequences of sin, either as corrective discipline, watch this, from God for those he loves, or what they call punitive action by God upon rebellious people. So again, as we start to look at it, there are some moments that, that God is correcting us. There are some moments that, that, that God wants you to recognize you can't live in sin and, and feel my Savior's love. That's some things that, that, that only you and God know and only you and God can feel. Please don't get quiet on me, y'all. I'm just throwing out. I'm just saying what I'm saying here. Um, because I don't want nobody to leave the church talking about, well, God don't love me. Yeah, God still loves you. But, but the Bible says, who God loves, he also chastens. He also disciplines. And that becomes a part of, 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 of getting us from the point of suffering and moving us to a point where we look in the mirror and say, okay, God, let me own this so I can move forward. Everybody with me? So, so here it is the key for us when we start to look at Hebrews 12 and 6 says that for whom the Lord, watch this, loves, he disciplines or he chastens. And here is the key for us. 
and scourges every son whom he receives. I'm going to ask the question. If, 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 if you love your children, uh, would you not want to see them go in the right direction? And would you not want to see them do the right things? Yeah. And, and sometimes in order for them to go in the right direction, you got to put some limits out there. you got to put some boundaries. you, you got to say, if you go outside of these boundaries, there's consequences. Mm -hmm. And this is what oftentimes God does for us. He said, I want to see you blessed. I want to see you living right. I want to have the abundance flowing in your life. But, but I can't do it if you keep going outside of the boundaries of what I've set for your life. And every now and then, God got to bring you back to that point where he can keep using you and blessing you. And that is when we started to look at the Hebrew writer and said, the Bible said, whom the Lord loves. If God didn't love you, he'll let you go out and do everything you want to do. Amen? And so when we start to look at it, we're like, here it is for us. When we think about it, uh, God oftentimes corrects us. I want to share this with you because I saw this. Proverbs 10 and 17 it said, whoever heeds, here, here is the key, instruction is on the path to life. But he who rejects reproof leads others astray. Why is this important? Because uh, as people who are Christ-like, you cannot, amen, uh, lead people and tell them how to do right if you are not willing to listen yourself. Oh, yeah. You, you cannot correct other people if nobody can't correct you. And so what God is ultimately saying to you and I is the fact that if you're going to be the one that leads people through the path of life, sometimes you got to be able to own the fact that, look, I, I'm not doing what I need to do. I need to change my life. I need to get my life together in order for me to be where I need to be. I know we got to get out of here. So here it is for us. Why does God just come up? This last part, so I got to get you all. Most of us can understand the principle that whom God loves, he does what? This and we would expect a loving father to correct us and call us to renew our obedience to who? To yeah. him. And so as we start to look at it, we start to deal with it, part of our role is to understand that God does correct us. But then last, as we get ready to go, uh, he also uses judgment as a part of our life. We're going to come back next week. We're going to deal with it. Uh, let us keep in mind that we, we're going to move to our next outline next week. Make sure that we're where we need to be. Amen. Amen. Thank God for y'all. Let everybody say. Amen. Amen. Everybody say. Amen. Everybody say. Amen. 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 Shall we pray? Father, we bless you now to what I hear the word I receive. God, tonight you have given us a word from on high. God, we recognize not only uh, that the suffering alerts us, but God, we also understand that there are some things we got to look in the mirror. And as we begin to look in the mirror, God, show us us, God. Show us what needs to change. Show us uh, what has gotten us off the path, God. Because, God, we want to be living in abundance. We want to live like you want us to live. But, God, tonight, whatever you need to do, God, put us in your hand. God, if you need to go by the potter's house, put us on the wheel, God. Roll us, God. Bend us, break us until God will become more like you. God, tonight dismiss us from this place, but never from your sight. It's in your name we do pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. Amen. Yeah.